Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season and spent a lot of time with your friends and family. It's been a while since I posted on YouTube, so hello! And today I'm going to share with you guys a bit about my trip to Japan a couple months ago. Um, some nail product unboxings and also a nail tutorial on these Christmas nails which I designed to match my Christmas tree this year and also my PJs. So. Yeah, let's go. So a couple months ago, I went to Japan for vacation and I visited the tat store in Ginza. It's right beside the big Uniqlo and inside the store they had these guides that were really helpful in showing you what the top products of each year were. So I picked up the top cuticle oil and also hand cream to try. Um, the store also has some of everything, nail polishes, glitter, nail art charms, everything that you would need. And I picked up some products, and this is what I got. So first up is the Top Cuticle Care Oil, and it's by Grown Care. I actually haven't really tried it yet, but I'll let you know if I like it. Next, I got two cat eye polishes from Toys. And one has a pink undertone, the other one has a blue undertone. I also picked up two of their liquid Aurora powders to try. I'm still getting used to using these, but here are some swatches on how those two colors look. And then these third ones are how they look layered over the cat eye. It's harder to see in natural light, but under indoor lighting, it looks like these bottom two right nails. I also got a bunch of glitter flakes that were really pretty from Toys, from Agaha, and then Amina, and Sherry Diva. I'm pretty sure I pronounced these names all wrong. Um, please let me know in the comments if you know how to pronounce them correctly, but they're all very pretty. Most of the ones I got are Aurora Flakes, as you can see on the left, and then two of them also have some gold and champagne flakes mixed in. This is how they look under artificial light, and I love using these glitter flakes with marble designs in different layers. And I used it most recently in my Snoopy set. So this wraps up everything that I got from Japan. And moving on from Sweetie Nail Supply, here are some PR products that I received the last few months. Uh, most of them are fall collections, but I'll show you the swatches of all of these. So first up is Yogurt Nails Cookie Bear Collection. This is the collection I was most excited about. I probably would have bought it even if it wasn't sent to me. Um, it comes with 10 polishes. They're all syrup gels. I love their formula. It's not too thin and also not too thick. A good medium and it also bubbles very nicely. The collection comes with some pinks, browns, and blues. I'm a sucker for cute packaging, so this teddy bear swatch card is everything. Next up is Mayo's Hengen Collection. I really like this packaging as well. It reminds me of Mooncakes, and Mooncake packaging is actually what inspired my own Pasta Nail packaging. So it comes with six polishes, um, five of them are syrup gels, one of them is a glitter. I find that their syrup gels are a bit thicker, similar to candy gel, and it doesn't quite level out as easily, but it's still very pretty. I love that it comes with three different shades of red and this color collection is so good for the upcoming Lunar New Year so I'm really excited to use some of these polishes more very soon. Next up is Moore's Sepia collection and this one comes with 10 polishes. They're also syrup gels. The formula is quite thin but it also levels out very easily and levels out very nicely. These are the swatches, and this is with two coats of polish. Next up, we have this Jelly Me collection by Cat's Me. Kind of sounds like Jelly Bean. Maybe that was the intention. But it came with some nail stickers as well. I also love the packaging. This is so cute. Each box has a little fruit in the corner which kind of represents what color is inside. And so this is a 3D sculpture gel. 
They are tinted in different colors, but still pretty transparent. And these pots come like filled to the brim, like you're getting all the product inside. And this is how they look. They're also not sticky and very easy to work with. Next up is Shebang Shebang. This is Yogo's Topping Glitter Gel Collection. It comes with four different colors. And each glitter gel comes with its own packaging. And every box actually came with a spare brush, which is really nice because glitter gels tend to be thicker and chunkier, and sometimes it will bend your bristles. So it's really awesome that they give an extra for you. This is how they look. So there's a pink one, a blue one, a silver one, and a gold glitter. Next up is Sweet Candy Gel's Autumn Collection. This one comes with 10 syrup colors and it is a Hima free collection. They always come with a certificate of authenticity. Their nail polish bottles are one of my favorites because of the bow. And if you've been following me for a while, then you might know that I use a lot of Sweet Candy syrup gels because I really like them. Um, they are thicker. They level out very well, and they also blend together very easily. So I love using these to create multicolored ombre nails. Their collections always come with a cute swatch card as well, and this one has like a little kind of 3D effect to it. And it kind of just folds up like this. Next up is the third Art Liquid Collection by Moore. Their Art Liquid Collections have been bestsellers throughout last year while the watercolor effect was trending and is still trending. This newest collection has more neutrals and fall tones. These inks dry very quickly and are great for abstract effects and also marbling. Remember to shake the bottles before using them. And here are how the swatches look. Next up is Vala's Color Palette 2 collection. And I also have Color Palette 1, which I'll show you shortly. But it comes in this pretty box. And I love the shape of their bottles. I think they look super cute. This one has a more red and nude tones. They are syrup gels. And I find that their formula is a bit thinner compared to mayo and sweet candy, but then thicker than yogurt gels. This is how the swatches look, and we'll be using one of these red shades in my tutorial later. And now I'm going to open Color Palette 1, which has 8 polishes as well, and they're in cooler colors. There's also an option if you like both of these collections, if you buy both color palette one and two, I believe you get a discounted price. And these are the colors. And I really like these colors actually. I don't think I have anything quite like it. Um, I think they'd be great for cottage core or like fairy garden type aesthetics. So this wraps up my PR from Sweetie Nail Supply. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Product links will be down below. Next up, Yogo and Nail also sent me some free products to try. First of all, these are four 3D sculpting gels. If you guys watched my duck and frog nail tutorial, you would have seen me use Milk Jam. Uh, but they also have two other fun colors now. One is called Silky Bean, the other one is Soda Bean. And they're kind of pinkish, purplish, glittery 3D gels. I think it'd be super cute to use Silky Bean to create some 3D dittos. They also gifted me three of their cat eye polishes under the Holy Moly series. And there's a blue one, a gold one, and a pink one. So the base colors for these are actually very bright underneath the cat eye and they look very different right now in natural light. I'm actually wearing them. 
but under a spotlight, the blue is much brighter and more visible, and so is the cat eye effect. They also gifted me a glass top gel by Mayo that I really like, and it's my current favorite. I hope you guys enjoyed the product unboxings. Now we're going to move on to the tutorial where I'll show you some of my nail prep, how to do ombre, plaid, and also 3D knit nail art. So I know that these were my Christmas and holiday nails, but I think you can easily switch up the snowflakes for ribbons or hearts and make it kind of like a Valentine's Day look. This design is symmetrical, so this is one hand already completed. So usually I kind of skip the nail preparation piece in my tutorials, but today I'm going to show you guys a bit more. Um, so I'm putting on my gloves, and these are my nail tip holders. They were designed and created by my friend Alexia from Minute Nails, and I really like these because they're a lot taller. They give you more space to hold onto, and this has prevented me from getting hand cramps. I also like that the top part of it is a lot thinner, and that lets small pinky sizes to fit on top much better. So first of all, I'm going to take a nail file and I'm just going to fix up the shape of each of these nails. They do come pre-shaped, but I just find that the shape isn't always perfect. Sometimes there's some extra gel sticking out. Once that is done, I'm going to take a nail buffer and I use this to buff all over the top of the nail. This will remove the shine and scratch up the nail, making it better for gel to adhere. Now that's done, let's use some sticky tack to attach each of the nails onto the holders. If you don't have sticky tack, you can also use double-sided tape. Next, I'm going to take a lint-free pad and soak it in some rubbing alcohol and just wipe down the nails. So now that our nails are all clean, I'm going to use a base gel. This one is the Zenny's Neo Base Gel. My bottle is almost empty, so bear with me here. This has been my favorite base gel for a while now. I like the viscosity of it. It works well for me, and I find that bubbles kind of dissipate and disappear easily. Here the base gel and once cured, the prep process is complete and now we're going to start with the thumb and pinky nail. I'm going to show you how I do the plot. So for the base red, I'm using a Felix gel by Vala. This is in color palette 2, which I unboxed earlier. So my thoughts when I first used this syrup gel is that it is a bit streakier. It doesn't bubble out quite as easily as some of the other ones that I have, but you just have to work with it a bit more and get used to it, and it will even out. Um, so I'd say it's still easy to get even coverage with two coats, um, but if you want to do one coat of this color, then it'll be a bit trickier. So this is the second coat, and I'm adding a second coat to all of the nails.
Once that is done, I'm going to put out some black polish. So this is Blanc the Blue's um, black syrup gel. And I'm going to use this to create the black lines. I found that it was a little too transparent though, so I'm mixing in some solid black. This is Devox uh, Banta Black. And so I'm kind of mixing it together to get the opacity that I want. And this is sort of the opacity that I'm working with. I like that it's somewhat translucent because when you do the horizontal lines, you want to be able to see it overlapping to create that nice plaid effect. So when I'm drawing these horizontal lines, instead of focusing on the line itself, I actually like to look at the red square. I find that that helps me keep the line straighter and also more even. And you can always go back in to add more gel if you need to, to even things out. Just try not to make it too dark so that you can't see the overlay between the lines. And now I'm just adding one more coat of the red because I wanted the nails to be a little darker. And I find that it also helps with blending out and smoothing out the black. So while those nails are curing, I'm going to start working on the middle nail, and for this one, we're doing an ombre. So first, I'm going to put on a thin layer of black syrup gel. And then I'm going to use an ombre brush and on the side that needs to fade out, I'm just going to tap over it. Once it looks blended to me, I'm going to cure it in the lap and then I'm going to apply another layer. This time I'm going to apply the layer a little lower than the first one and this will help with making the transition very smooth. Also, I like to do this with the nail upside down, um, but that's totally just my preference. You don't have to do it this way, whatever is easiest for you. I really love using syrup gels in general for ombre. It's just made it so much easier than solid colors. You should definitely try it if you haven't before. Now I'm adding a third coat of the red, just like what we did with the plaid nails. Next, to finish off the plaid design, I'm going to paint on some thin white lines, and I'm using my favorite white liner, which is D-Gel's Painting Gel. So the biggest tip for painting nice clean lines, first of all, is making sure you're using a painting gel and not just any solid color gel. Painting gels are meant for covering other colors, um, they're thicker, and so the gel stays in place where you're painting it, it doesn't really disperse, and honestly it makes all the difference. And second, remember you don't have to do everything in just one stroke. Okay, once the lines are done, I'm going to add a gold bow. And I'm just dipping it into the Jinbi Crazy Top Gel, which is my favorite thing for securing large charms.
Once it is in place, I'm going to cure this under my lap. And I'm also going to add a small bow on the pinky nail. So to finish off this nail, I'm taking a liner brush and I'm picking up a lot more of the Crazy Top Gel and I'm using it to fill up the space all around the bow. And I'm actually even filling up the loops. This is a super important step, especially for larger charms because you want them to stay in place and this is how you secure it. By filling up all the gaps and space around the charm, you're reducing the chance that it'll get caught onto things and pull off the nail. And the reason why I love using Jinbi's Crazy Top Gel is because it's thick, it's strong, and it's also no white. So all these areas where I'm applying this gel, once it's cured, you don't need to go over it again with a top coat. Now that both of the plaid nails are done, I'm going to finish off the middle nail. And this one, we're just going to paint some snowflakes and also add a bow at the top. So to paint the snowflake, I'm first of all using my painting gel again, and I'm just placing little white dots. And these white dots are basically just little references for where I want to draw the lines. So I ended up kind of off frame and blurry for the rest of the snowflake. Hopefully I can do a better job recording next time. But I'm basically just connecting the dots and pulling the lines to the center of the snowflake. For the smaller snowflake at the top, we're going to cross three lines evenly. So I do this by drawing two lines in a narrow X shape first, and then the third line and then add in all the little details. And now that the snowflakes are done, I'm using Jinbi's Crazy Top Gel again to add some decorations. I added some tiny snowflakes and this nail design is complete. And we'll move on to the final nail, which is the index and the ring finger nail. And this is the 3D sweater nail. So the sweater polish I'm using is Sweet Candy Gel's winter collection from last year. It's a fur gel, but the little fur hairs are really fine, not too visible. And it also has some glitter and shimmeriness to it. And now I'm using Show Me's Embo Powder. This is a powder that you can mix into any of your gel colors to thicken it. So if you want to create 3D designs or just have some texture to your gel, all you have to do is just mix some of this powder into it. And I don't have a formula or anything on how much powder I use versus gel. I kind of just add more as I go and then until I get the consistency that I like. The nice thing about Embo powder is you can use it with any gel color, but I wouldn't use this for making like more 3D-ish designs. So I set my mixture aside and I'm just going to paint a base layer of the color of the sweater color first. And because I want the nail tip to be clear, I'm being very careful not to go too far down the nail. And don't worry about it having a perfect curve because we're going to take a small liner brush to just fix the French tip.
And now I'm going to use a small liner brush again to pick up the thicker gel mixture we made earlier. And I'm going to draw these little L-shaped lines to create the sweater pattern. And I'm keeping these layers pretty thin because we can always cure them and add more to build up the thickness. You can also flash cure as you go. This will make sure your lines kind of stay in place and that the gel isn't dispersing. I ended up doing about two to three layers and this is how the nail looks. And now to make it look more like a real sweater, I'm going to use a matte top coat and just cover the sweater, keeping the layers very thin to not ruin the 3D effect. And now the sweater part is done. I'm taking a liner brush with my white and I'm adding some little dots to add a bit more design to the sweater nail. And then I'm going to use a liner to add some gold glitter around the French tip and also a tiny red bow. And then a final touch for the bow. And before we complete this nail, I'm also going to top coat the bottom side of the clear tip. And this is mainly to get rid of the little number that's at the bottom of the press-on nail. And then finally, remember to top coat all the nails if you haven't already. And our design is done. Let's see how they look all together. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something or took something away from this tutorial. And maybe you can adapt it for Valentine's Day or your future nail design. If you have any questions or anything else you want to see next, please leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again next time.